Hello and welcome to The Watch List. Micromodular nuclear reactor developer Terra Innovatum has exciting partnership news. Joining me with the details is Chief Business and Development Officer Giordano Moriki. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Now, how does the Amoresco partnership accelerate Terra Innovatum's timeline to revenue and eventual profitability? The Amerisco partnership is a major accelerator for solo commercial pathway. Um, Amerisco brings into like a deep in knowledge and the customer needs, operations, which ultimately enable solo and, and ourselves to be positioned either as a standalone feature or a part of a broader uh, mix of energies as you know, we're going from the energy transition to get to net zero 2025, uh, 2050. Um, their expertise is extremely important uh, in uh, accessing customer site, uh, ensuring optimal speed and deployment, right? Once the reactors will be licensed with the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Um, and of course, they have a strong relationship with the federal agencies, especially the Department of Defense, which provides Terra Innovatum a, a very fast track uh, and high value customers who prioritize resilient zero, uh, zero carbon energy deployment. Um, overall, uh, I think if we sum up into a sentence or two, it means uh, shorter sales cycles, earlier deployments, uh, and a clear line of sight in terms of uh, revenue and, and profitability, of course, with the deployment of 50 reactors. All right. Now, what moat does Solo have compared to other emerging micromodular reactor developers? Uh, Solo is the world's first micromodular nuclear reactor that can be commercial by 2028. Uh, the company really cracked the code. We um, spent six years in R&D before we actually finalized our reactor design in October 2024. Um, and we have completed the advanced design, uh, hence why they would not participate to many of the federal programs which are designed to support research and development efforts for the SMR players. Uh, so there's a one megawatt electric, four megawatt thermal. Usually the SMRs are much larger. They go from 10 megawatt to 300 uh, or so. And uh, we are, the, the reactor is 2.5 meter by 6 meters and it fits within a 30 feet by 30 feet cube. So it's very, very small, uh, which is called biological shield, uh, which, you know, um, uh, blocks all of radiations, exposures, meaning people can go and touch it and it's completely safe. Uh, and it's uh, built in a factory and assembled on site, which means that we found a way to module and replicate the same reactor after being licensed over and over and over again, because usually nuclear power plants were licensed and then they had to go through the next one and the next one, but they're all different. They were all ad hoc, right? We found a way to standardize this procedure at scale. Um, and uh, we made it very safe. Um, we a fuel, which is non-proliferant. A low enriched uranium. We are the only micro reactor today that uses low fuel, which is non proliferant, uh, doesn't produce a lot of plutonium, uh, is not dangerous uh, for the dual technology aspect and nature of nuclear technology. And for this reason, we embedded, uh, along with the off the shelf components, which were licensed already and which are also vastly available today in the supply chain, along with the fuel, uh, we embedded the safeguards by design into our reactor design, uh, which also enabled the global commercialization uh, in different pathways of the different regulators from the US NRC and NSA, IAEA, right, the Atomic Ag Energy Agency in, in, in Europe. Um, we're very much on track uh, on the licensing. Uh, we believe, uh, I think it's about a couple of weeks ago, we sent uh, updates on how we are planning and how we actually speeded up our licensing process. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're expected to be um, having the construction uh, permit by 2027, along with it, uh, by the end of the year of 2027, the operational license, uh, and then the commercialization by 2028. So we are really the first reactor to market because not only of the deregulation that have been happening um, in, in the sector, pushed by the administration and so forth, but because we provide something that is available today, vastly in a robust supply chain, there's no scarcity, with a fuel that in contrast to the Halio, which is proliferant and not available at commercial scale today, even though there's federal programs to start enrichment facilities in the US. Remember, this was a fuel that was produced by Russia at the beginning, right, in majority. Um, it will take time. So the only way we could do, we can do today, a micromodular reactor in a safe way possible is to do 
with Leo to use low enriched uranium and off the shelf components. And we again spent six years cracking the code uh, to make this reality possible. Uh, and this is why all the other players cannot use Leo. Well, thank you for all that information. And now for investors in GSR3 Acquisition Corp, how does this MOU strengthen the investment thesis ahead of a potential business combination? Um, the alliance with Ameresco as a leading U.S. energy player provides a truly direct market validation. It's a huge name in the industry, uh, not only in the U.S., but I would say globally, and definitely strengthens the commercial position, reinforcing the attractiveness as a point of entry to the consumers. Um, unlike, again, other SMRs uh, and MMRs that are out there, which are still in the R&D phase on uh, pre-commercial phases uh, and so forth, uh, Sol is truly uniquely positioned as one of the very few advanced reactors uh, and reactor technologies which are approaching a near-term revenue generation because of, again, off-the-shelf components, the licensed fuel, we can pretty much call our supply chain, which we have secured globally, not only in Europe, but also in the US and in South America, actually, with different partnerships, strategic partnerships. And for investors, means that the agreement underscores a tangible demand between public and private. So not only on the commercial side, as our first of a kind side, but also on the federal land, but not to get R&D funding, but as a customer, as an actual client, right? Uh, so again, tangible demand, strengths in the investment thesis. And, um, and again, it's pretty much transitioning uh, technological differentiation into a clear commercial interaction. Well, thank you so much, Giordano, for your time for the watch list. I'm Karina Robertson.